for yeah. me, it's it's um, gives me a good feeling when I read through the Bible and you see that you know God calls out David as the apple of his eye. Well, here's a guy that yes. you know, committed murder, adultery, adultery. you yeah. know Moses, a murderer. All these right. there's there's only a couple Bible characters mm -hmm. that there's nothing negative written about. Right. It gives normal people hope that look, if God said He really loved that guy, exactly. and look how powerful He worked in his life. Well, then we've all got hope and we're all in the same boat right they say the cross at the foot of the 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 ground is level at the foot of the cross mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for all of us right and it doesn't matter if you're a pastor a priest lay person mechanic waitress mm -hmm. doctor god loves us all equally right. for all have sinned fall short of the glory of god and when you start digging into the bible and start reading his promises and get jesus didn't die a horrible miserable death and and go through what he went through so that we could just live a normal life right you know he he rose again Mm -hmm. And so that puts us in a place of victory. It says the Christ victory. in us, the hope of glory. Right, right. Yeah. So it's about normal people doing what God calls them to do right. in their life. And so because of the accident, uh, God has opened the door for full-time ministry, and that is what we do now. Mm -hmm. As my family's here with me today, and we go out, um, I share my testimony, and then the exciting part is after I share my testimony, it raises people's faith. Mm -hmm. It says in the Bible, let the, rede let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And it says in Revelation, they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. So all of us, our testimony as Christians, are powerful. So when I, and again in Revelation, there's a verse that says that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So if what Jesus did in your life is prophetic of what he'll do in your life, and what Jesus has done in my life is prophetic of what he'll do in his life, right. and, and so forth and so on. And so when we share our testimony people, it raises their faith because they'll say, you know, Man, if, if God came and saved that guy, you know, considering the way he lived his like whole adult life, sure, I've got a chance. And that's the birth of faith talk. Mm -hmm. You know, First Peter three fifteen, right? Always be prepared to share the hope sure. that's in you. All right. And so we are the body. We are the church. It's not just left up to the ordained pastors or priests or the the leaders. What we would call the leaders of the church. Right. It's up to each one of us to share the joy in how God works in each one of our lives. It's, we're blessed to be a blessing, and that's through that personal testimony. Amen. I would say, and just to add to that, not even just the joy, but the power too, because Jesus said mm -hmm. in Mark 16, those who believe, and what I love about that, that section, the, his great commission that's mm -hmm. listed by, the, by Mark, he says, those who believe in my name, they will, and he goes through this list, well, like, there's some pretty crazy things on that list. The first mm -hmm. thing is cast out devils. The last mm -hmm. thing is lay their hands on sick people, mm -hmm. and they will get well. And so again, at the end of when I get done speaking at a place, we invite people forward for prayer, mm -hmm. and we get to see God do miracles all the time. And that, I think that's supposed to be normal Christianity. I mean, I agree it's not with just you. Yeah. it's not because I had this accident. God sent angels to save me. Mm -hmm. It should be everybody that calls themselves a Christian, because Jesus said, "Those who believe in my name, they will do these things." And right. so we're all called. And I mean, He's He's calling us to do it. It's, it's like it's a command. It's not a if you want to, he's saying, go do it. Mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. when I get done speaking, a lot of times God will have me pray for people for a while and then stop praying and then start picking up people in the crowd to pray for the people. Okay. As, as God leads me, Thanks. I'll just pick people out and say, okay, now you, or a really good one is if somebody gets healed from something, I'll take that person, I'll say, okay, now you pray for the next person and you pray for the next person. And then the rate of miracles actually goes way up. Right. Because God gets all the glory. Right, right. They're not looking at me thinking that mm -hmm. I've got some special gift or something special about me. God right. gets all the glory because it's people out of the crowd praying for people. Sure. They're getting healed one after another, after another, after another. And then it's, you know, all the glory goes to Jesus where it belongs. Your mm -hmm. life has obviously changed dramatically. Yeah, yeah. And talk a little bit about that. But well, there's, you know, Psalm 1 tells us, you know, cut ties with, don't hang around with, spend time with people that are entrenched in sin. Yes, we're God's called us to minister to them, but we're not called to, you know, um, live in that lifestyle. And so mm -hmm. that for me was a real struggle for years, mm -hmm. knowing the way I should live, but not doing it and so forth. And so, uh, because, you know, oftentimes you'll find somebody that drinks alcohol a lot, they're gonna surround themselves with people that drink alcohol a lot so they feel normal. Somebody that does drugs a lot, they're gonna sur surround themselves with people that do drugs so that, that feels normal. Sure. If they're into pornography, well then there's a good chance they're gonna have friends that are into mm -hmm. that stuff just so that you have that sense of normalcy. Mm -hmm. And so because of most of my friends and most of the people that, um, that I called my friends were close to me, were into that kind of lifestyle, it was definitely 
is awkward and it's hard to, um, you know, I just tell them, look, this is what God did for me. You know who I was. This is who I am, am now. Some of them have been able to accept that. Some of them haven't. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, some believe in God, some don't believe in God. You know, so it's because we're all so unique and we're all different places in our walk with the Lord. Right. There's such a varied reaction to that. You mm -hmm. know, it really is across the board. Mm -hmm. You know, but we're called to be light in the darkness. That's right. right. And not to be, you know, we're not supposed to be out of the world. We're supposed to be in the world. Mm -hmm. But we're not supposed to be. In the world, be but not of the world. Of the world, exactly. Right. So. Yeah, and he gives each one of us different gifts, right. sure. you know, and um, also to people watching, and as I say, I just shared with my Bible study group Wednesday night, it's not necessarily being out there, being a, a Joyce Meyer, for example, on a stage preaching, but it's being the light and the salt to the chil your children, you know, in your that God has placed right in your midst, and there's all different levels of serving. It's just having that discerning spirit yeah. as to what does he want me to do and how can I make a difference in the people's lives that he's placed right in my midst? Um, be his servant in where he's placed you. I say your circle of influence. Exactly. It's your family. You mm -hmm. got to start with your family. Mm -hmm. Bible's clear. Start with your family. It's the, your friends, mm -hmm. your neighbors, the people you work with, the people right. at school. Start with your circle of influence. And even as you mentioned, like what made me, what a comment you made made me think about even in the church, you'll find that because we're all unique and we're all on at different areas in our right. walk with the Lord, just because you're in a certain area with God doesn't mean that, that Phyllis is. And so you might say, you know, God's doing this, this in my life. Well, that might be, you know, we all, we're talking about our conservative background before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That might make some people uncomfortable in church. So somebody in your church might, you know, you might be making, you might make some people feel uncomfortable in your church because you're talking about things that they haven't experienced before mm -hmm. or not right. used to dealing with. We think about it. Jesus made everybody uncomfortable no matter, all the time. Mm -hmm. His own disciples. Mm -hmm. I mean, right down to his own disciples. John the Baptist, he shook him up once. I mean, he, John the Baptist says, uh, he's the Christ, he's the Lamb of God. Then he gets stuck in prison. Mm -hmm. Nothing seems to be getting any better. And he sends his disciples, are you really the one? Mm -hmm. Now he starts having second thoughts. I mean, it's clear. Sure. You know? Sure. So Jesus offended some people, made a lot of people uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. If we're really walking with the Lord, we're going to be making un people un feel uncomfortable, but it doesn't have to be like in a bad way. No. Right. It can be in an eye-opening way. It's an eye-opening way. Eye way. You know, in a good way, mm -hmm. positive, right. positive right. changes. No, that's, that's a great word from the Lord right there. <laughs> 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 Very true. So you have a lot of things coming up, including um, being back in our Lake Country area, yes. right? On May, May 8th, at the Country Springs Hotel. You'll be speaking to a group of ladies in our immediate area. We're thrilled to have you come back to our our little community. We'll be happy to be and, uh, Yeah, that'll be exciting. Yeah, I'm sure we'll us. have lots of stories to share back in, when you come back in May. 